Good evening, look at this video. Today we have a spade review of the RO44 Italian float plane. This has been something that I'm sure you Italian naval players have been looking forward to, and this is something that I've been looking forward to because I love me a seaplane. And this is a starting point, to put it lightly, and that, that also indicates that this thing is not the best. It does have some benefits, and obviously we're going to cover those, but it does have its fair share of flaws, but we'll get into that very shortly. So from what I've read, the Oro 44 was basically a one-seat version of the Oro 43 that you might see on your Italian ships if you're a naval player. And from what I can read, this thing was actually worse than that. And I don't know how it can do that, but, you know, there's there's got to be a start some point, I guess. So going over the aircraft itself, and I must say, I'm I'm not... I, I, I do kind of like this new X-Ray, but it, I'm still indecisive about it. But anyway, going over the engine, it's a 9-cylinder radial with takeoff power at 707 horsepower and max power, which is 100%, at 610 horsepower. Stock, it's a lot lower, and you're gonna feel that. This thing's stock is an absolute pig, and that's putting it that lightly. It still turns very well, and it still handles decently, other than the rudder, which is a bit 50-50. But the overall engine power is very lacking at the stock point, that is. Although it doesn't take long to spend this plane, it took me two games. But the fact is, is that this plane just doesn't have the power to compete with stuff stock can still turn fight decently well but one thing you need to avoid in this plane is vertical maneuvers this thing just doesn't have the power so if you can try and limit doing any sort of vertical maneuvers in terms of guns you have two 12.7 millimeter or 50 caliber breda safat machine guns with 220 rounds apiece. these have a decent rate of fire although they're not the highest but to be fair you don't need it to be the highest because you only have 440 rounds and these guns hit pretty hard. They set fires very nicely with air targets. Stock, they are a bit crap, to say the least. But it's not that bad. Like, it's it's really not that bad. And it could be a lot worse, is all I'm saying. And of course, in terms of armor protection, the aircraft lacks any. And it also lacks any unlockable skins. Additionally, it also lacks any sort of unlockable bombs. Same as the RO-43, from what I've been able to find out. And really, there's not much to cover in terms of, like, this vehicle overall. I recommend using air target belts. You get a decent mix of API and HEF, which is obviously the high explosive fragmentation. And these bullets are pretty pretty good, to say the least. You're going to be fighting biplanes with these, and you're firing high explosive rounds at them. Now, the way to find out if you actually have the high explosive rounds and how much, like, damage they actually do... You can actually look here. If you go to the protection analysis, you can see that these are 1.02 grams. Now, this isn't a lot, but you've got to remember that you're firing 12.7 ammunition uh, biplanes, and they are ten well, they tend to be quite fragile. Combine that with AP, which is also going to do some damage. These guns are rather nasty, and whilst the high explosive fragmentation doesn't really do a huge amount on paper, the fact is is that it's high explosive lugging or shall we say, throwing at 1.0. So it does help out a lot. Overall, though, I do think you should give this plane a go. It is the first plane in the Reggiani line, which I don't know why they plonked it here. I'd have probably plonked it, like, either here or, like, maybe had its own dedicated line. But overall, it's not a bad plane. And as you're going to see in the table, it is a plane that you can definitely do some work in. But anyway, speaking of that table, I'm going to hand you over to the table now. If you want to just skip ahead to the gameplay, you can do in the co in the description below. And there will also be a timestamp to jump to the table if you choose to just jump ahead. But anyway, let's go take a look at my table and see how this plane did. Because it did not take long. See you all in a moment. And welcome to my little table. Normally I'd just skip, like, all the battles that are uninteresting. But this thing only had two battles to be spaded, so... Yeah, I'm just going to talk about both battles. So battle number one was obviously completely stock with one air kill, 11 ground kills, which were on mostly trucks. No assist, didn't die, 6,606 SL, 2,261 RP. And then battle two was where I was pretty much spaded. I think I was missing like two modules. Three air kills, eight ground kills, zero assist, didn't die, 11,024 SL, 2,084 RP. 
Overall, not a bad spade. I mean, it does have its problems with the rudder, as you'll see in the gameplay, and obviously I'll talk about it in the gameplay, because, yeah, I obviously record the table part after the plane is spaded, but you get my point. The fact is, is that this plane does have its benefits, and obviously helping out Italian um, coastal, well, blue water players with their own personal plane is nice and all, and I think this is a step in the right direction. Because a lot of nations could use this, and obviously with France recently getting a naval tree, I think France could get a, a float plane that isn't a obviously an event vehicle. The late 298D is not great, but at least it's a float plane, and only certain players have access to that. So I think we are moving forward in terms of the right direction to help out both the air players and the naval players. But of course, with the Italian float planes tending to lack bombs unless they're bigger like twin engine or even triple engine aircraft they're not going to be the most useful for grand players but to be fair you have to make a compromise somewhere but anyway, i'm going to hand you over to the gameplay now i hope you enjoyed seeing the table and how short it is and i hope you'll hopefully take this plane out because it's only 2900 rp or so to research it but anyway i'll see you all on the next one i think he's just ripped his wing off or something He's not been in any combat, and I think he's just torn his own wing off in a dive or something. Poor guy. Well, you can definitely feel the difference in the engine mods, that's for sure. Like, um, I pretty much got this thing almost spaded in one game, which is the first batch that you would have seen on the table. If, if you've skipped the table, I don't blame you, because this is two games and this thing's spaded. Um, but yeah, this this plane is like you you feel the difference. Let's put it that way. It's one of those low tier planes that starts out a bit terrible ish. Like the handling's good, but uh, oh, there goes another one ripping his wings. Um, it starts out terrible, but then like once you get the engine mods and wings done and everything. It does feel a lot better. Like, the climb is better than that Nimrod is, I guess, something. But considering I have to start with an air spawn and he doesn't, that doesn't exactly bode well. Thank you. Also, watch the rip speed as you saw there. I got a reduced speed warning at 238 miles an hour. Do not expect this thing to be, like, good in a dive, because it's not. From what I've read, this thing was actually worse than the RO-43, like, in general. That's what I've heard, anyway, and looked up and everything. Alright, watch the rip speed, it's about 2.30ish. All together, girl. I know you've, you're very fresh in my hangar, but that don't mean you can't hold together. Thank you. Uh, you might want to pull up, buddy. There you go. See, we're already having a much more interesting match than my first match, which was literally j What are you doing? Is he... Look, I know you're trying to surrender. But, uh, that's not how it works here, my friend. <laughs> I don't accept landing gear down as a surrender, although, in terms of, like, actual... World War II was considered that. <laughs> I mean, fair play to him. He did. He did tell me that he wanted to surrender, but you know. Right, let's follow up some ground targets for the remaining ammo. I'm not going to go for that D3 because this match has been very short. I mean, to be fair, it's a low-tier match where people are playing Nimrods. I mean, you expect it to be very long? I certainly don't. And yeah, he just killed the BA-65. That's alright, we'll probably head over there in a minute anyway. But, like, the handling of this thing is fine, the guns are fine, it's just the performance is not very good, but... Other than that, like, it's not a bad little float plane. Like, having Bredis of Fats at 1.0, that's really good. Like, I know it doesn't seem like much, but... 
Okay, being rude, I see. Um, but having Raider Safats at this low of a BR is actually really good, especially with the upgraded belts. And stock belts on the Braiders are not great, so be prepared for that when you do spade this thing. There we go. Okay, let's go hunt down that D3. Although he's faster than us, so I'm not expecting to catch him in time. Sorry if I've got a bit of a sniffle. Um, I've got a bit of a runny nose right now. And before anyone says, I've tried running after it. So don't make that joke in the comments. I mean, you can if you want. I think he's just RTB right now. He must have taken some damage. Uh, no, or he's burned up all his ammo. That's fine, I'll wait for him. 56 bullets with careful aim is enough to kill a D3, so I will wait for him. But then again, I want more ground targets. Thank you. Oh, go away. 20mm. I'm going to swing back around for that one, because that one seems very angry at me. Oh, there's the rudder, which is very awkward sometimes. The, the rudder is one of the most awkward pieces on this plane. It's not, it's not the nicest, but it works, but you've got to be careful with it. There we go. Right, let's head home. And I can now talk about this plane a little bit more on the way back. So as you saw there, it doesn't handle vertical maneuvers very well. That's one thing to consider. Um, it also doesn't climb particularly amazing stock upgraded like this one is. Because obviously this just has the fuselage repair and the new 12.7s left. Which I will get after this match. It's three kills, so yeah, I'll take that. Um, you can break the floats off. It's just very difficult, and chances are you're going to break the prop doing so, so don't rely on it. Um, but other than that, it's not a bad little plane. But, well, that D3 is probably going to be a while, so I'm going to cut to the next part of the match, and I'll see you guys in a moment. Well, to give you an idea of how slow this plane is, I didn't even get back to the runway, and um, the match ended. I, I almost did, but... Yeah, overall this plane isn't too bad. It's something that obviously Italy's been looking forward to, to like actually having a float plane in the tree. Um, and I definitely think this is a step forward in the right direction for War Thunder, like adding in actual seaplanes for all nations to actually use that aren't just event vehicles. Um, but obviously do take into account that this plane is a little bit weak in its performance. So, yeah. Other than that, though, it's not too bad, and it could be a lot worse, I think. But, yeah, I would give this thing a go, and plus, if you're a naval player, this thing will suit you just fine for capping points and things like that. Just bear in mind, it doesn't have flaps, so you will have to slow down the good old-fashioned way. But now that my plane is spaded, I hope you've actually gotten to see how this plane can do once you get some engine mods in it. And um, I hope you enjoyed today's review, and I'll see you all later.